We're here at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City for the 2010 International Press Freedom Awards. A thousand people came out to show their support for this year's recipients. With Tom Broca at the helm, the Committee to Protect Journalists paid tribute to six courageous men and women. It always gives me such a lift to hear these other journalists from around the world knowing what they go through. And it's a reminder to all of us of the privileges that we have here and how important it is to get the word out. Each honoree jeopardized their livelihood and personal freedoms to keep citizens informed. I have often wondered how it feels to be a journalist and report without constant fear of arrest. Dawit Kabede was imprisoned for nearly two years. His crime, shedding light on Ethiopia's 2005 election violence. After he was freed, Kabede stayed in his country to continue reporting. The question, why do you risk your life, is uh, a bit amazing because I didn't risk my life. Just I am reporting the truth. Unfortunately, our leaders doesn't want journalists who report the truth. Fellow recipients also defied political censorship at great cost. Mira, in Venezuela, well, in Venezuela we have different problems. Uh, media have been shut down. Journalists have been sued, persecuted, and uh, myself and the magazine I work for uh, have been fined and also uh, uh, received criticism from the government after articles that were published in the magazine. So these are the difficulties that Venezuelan journalists face while doing the job. I and my colleagues are being criminally prosecuted for incitement of hatred toward representatives of law enforcement agencies because we criticize their heavy-handed methods. I believe this is my duty, and first of all, this is my duty for myself, and more than anybody, anything else. Not all of the honorees were able to accept their awards in person. Journalist Mohamed Davari lost his freedom while reporting on alleged abuses at a now-closed Iranian detention center. Because he did that, he was imprisoned, and he is now in solitary confinement, and there are reports that his health is deteriorating. Despite these somber notes, there were also triumphs to celebrate. Sri Lankan journalist J.S. Tisanayagam was finally on hand to receive his 2009 award after being released from prison. Ladies and gentlemen, my apologies for being late. <laughs> we live in a society. We are all a part of each other. We are all intermeshed. And therefore, I think it's important that you give back. CPJ Executive Director Joel Simon urged the public to defend those Thank who might so deliver the Paul truth. There are so many journalists uh, around the world doing frontline reporting, frankly risking their lives to do these kinds of stories. We could do uh, one of these dinners every month. Fellow industry notables agreed. They risk governments. They risk being arrested. They risk their families being gone after. They risk hideous psychological pressure, and yet they do their jobs. People have to understand that without the media, they just, they don't have basic information. They don't know what their government's up to. And if they've elected that government, they've got every right to know, you know, how they're carrying out their duties. Attacking journalists is the first step on the road to dictatorship and fascism and so forth. So all the things that are terrifying about the behavior of governments over the last 50 years um, is always there in the darkness. Perhaps it was Arya Nair, honored for his lifetime work to advance press freedom, who best illustrated the message of the Thank night. If uh, journalists' rights are not protected, no one's rights can be protected. Jane Lee for the Committee to Protect Journalists.